This is Dr. Chris's Radio Horror Show, 91.3 FM. Not catching us on the broadcasting network. Hopefully you're catching this on YouTube. Uh, Scaricon 2019 in Framingham, Massachusetts. I'm here at the table with Kate Hodge, star of Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, as well as one of my favorite series from the 90s, She-Wolf of London. Yay! Thank you for sitting with me. Ruth, thank you for allowing me to sit with you for the weekend, Kate Hodge. Oh my God, my pleasure. Thank you for doing it. How did you get She-Wolf of London? I was just another actress of many in Los Angeles. 1989, was it, or 90? 90. Well, the show debuted in 90, so you would have filmed it probably in 89. No, it was actually right away, I think. August of 90. August of 90, okay. August of 90, we started filming in uh, Bristol, England. And uh, it was down to eight girls. And I swear to God, the reason I got the uh, part was because when they were finished with the scenes, acting scenes, I snarled and went... <laughs> And made a big uh, wolf face. You and brought I, out your animalistic yes, side. Yes, yes. That was more animal and bestial than... Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, had, you, uh, had you ever watched werewolf movies prior to this? Uh, not. I'd seen American Werewolf in London. Okay. And the guy who did the effects for it, I think, was the same guy. Rick Baker? No. It was a different guy. <laughs> I don't remember then who did the... <laughs> Uh, but had you, and you hadn't seen the original 1954, 1945 movie. You know? No, no, I hadn't. And I you even were you aware of it? No, I just knew that Universal owned the title and they made a TV show about it. Yeah, like Wolfman, She Wolf. They can copyright that. They can't copyright Werewolf. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it was funny is that in, on USA on Fo- or sorry on Fox at the same time there was a series called Werewolf. So you had your male werewolf and you had your female werewolf all at the same time. Oh my goodness, that's Too right. Too bad we could never have had a crossover. Yeah, that would have been interesting. That show was a lot more violent than your show. <laughs> yes, ours was more like uh, That also had to do with like, Satanist and stuff like that because he'd have like the sign pentagram on his hand or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, How we did were... you transform? What was your like trigger? Just the full moon, right? The full moon, the yes. The full moon. Do you remember a line that was said later on when it became uh, Loving Curses? Uh, There's not going to be a full moon for a few months. No, did they really say that? (laughs) And people were like, wait, who wrote the... Wait, what? Oh, my God. (laughs) There's a full moon, like, once a month. (laughs) That is very sad. What was the uh, process like to turn into the werewolf? And who played the werewolf? It wasn't you, right? It was a stunt No, it was a stunt double. She was a dancer from England. Oh, neat. And, you uh, have to be to move like the way she did. Yes, yes. Although in She-Wolf episode The Huntsman, where they marked all the doors, it was at the docks. Yeah. And I'm chained up in this warehouse. You're chained up in every episode. But I was wolfing out in chains. Bondage was your thing on that yes, show. Yes, definitely. <laughs> They shot it with the girl, but because she was so graceful and like Cirque du Soleil-ish, yeah. the director made me get in all the gear, get in the wolf outfit and everything, and reshoot the wolf out in chains, because so, I did it much more violently than her. At least it was a werewolf costume, unlike most werewolves say are CGI garbage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like a fur, long sleeve fur leotard right. thong. And then like the snout. The and snout, the, yeah. Everything else. Hi, hey, um, good. How are you? Inter- we're doing an interview. It should be done in, like, what? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, where was I? Oh, um, so you did get to wear it once. I did. I wore it a couple times. Okay. But did it would take so long that sometimes... And that's when you... I think you told me yesterday that they said just, no, we're going to do this with somebody else, and you're yeah. going to wolf out a little bit in the face, and then... Yeah. Duck down. Whoa, come back up. Yeah. Like uh, the episode Charlie drugs you and tries to take you back to L.A. You're like in the cargo hold. Oh, my God. That was a great. The, the airplane wolf out. Yeah. And then the wolf comes like. Do bouncing. you want everyone to die? Is that, was that your line? Mm-hmm. Because they wouldn't let me out of my chair. That happened on Buffy, too. Oz got chained up when oh, he was really? a werewolf. Yeah. And then on, uh, be, in, uh, did you ever watch Being Human, the UK show and the American show? No. It was about a werewolf, a vampire, and a ghost live together. Oh my gosh, it sounds like the beginning of a joke. <laughs> and they they had to chain the werewolf up a lot or whatever. So werewolf and bondage just go hand in hand. we got to chain them up or they'll kill everybody. Bestiality and bondage, I guess. <laughs> Considering yes. uh, Neil, Nick, no, Neil. Neil Dixon, yes. Neil Dixon, whatever, was heavily into your, 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 you guys were like the, it was moonlighting with werewolves. Good analogy. Will they, will they or won't they? Yes. Yes. <laughs> they became more of a romantic thing in L.A. 
when it was loving. Yeah, yeah. And my hair got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the, when like the DVD said, came out, they, they totally screwed the music. They had really great music during uh, She Wolf of London, but then the, the DVDs, they oh, couldn't like get the copyright. Yeah, it was that yeah. really god awful psychedelic. Stupid. Were you heavily into the supernatural ever? Uh, no, more into astrology. Like, what, what, what about. Uh, what, what is it about astrology that you're really into? I used to be fascinated with, like, um, birth charts and stuff like that. Like, you know, your moon is the seventh sign or whatever. And I found out I was, like, a Capricorn with a Capricorn rising and a Taurus moon. So I'm a triple Earth. And the first woman that ever read my birth chart said, your greatest danger is that you will die alone. Because <laughs> you're too grounded. Did you ever see the uh, She-Wolf of London comic book? No. Yeah, there was a She Wolf of London like like one shot comic book tying oh into God. the show. That's funny. They use all arts. So they don't have to use your you know, any photos of you to avoid right, right, like right. having to probably pay you royalties and right. stuff like that. But like uh, say, it was a buyout. Yeah. Do you anything from Starbucks? No, I'm, no, I'm still working on my coffee. Um they uh, uh did they, they never made any merchandise off of that. Like, any kind of... Other than the DVDs, right? No. No. DVDs, yeah. It's too bad. They could have had an action figure. Of the wolf, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Lady wolf. Yeah. That would have been a hot action figure. Bet- between that and Leatherface, what are the two things you think you're best known for? Um... Actually, I get a lot of... Were you on Law & Order? I've did. never, I've never been a fan of Law and Order. So I've never watched yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I was on SVU. I was on Criminal Intent, and I was on Law and Order two times. So I've been, you, I've been on like every one of them. And you're the goddess of death on Xena. Goddess of death on Xena. Angel of death. Angel of death. Yes. Celeste. Celeste. Yes. That was and, a good one. And um, talk a little bit about uh, Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee, as I've always said and always will say, was an absolute gentleman. Very talented. Um, very grounded, humble, just a really, really good person. What was he like, personally wise? Like when you guys, you guys have like a love making scene together. Was that really difficult to shoot? Um, no, we, he was very like respectful, and um, his actual fiance was on the set that day too. Oh, watching. And, yes, <laughs> she likes to humble. watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, just really, really classy. Because I didn't want to show my butt, and he said, well, show my butt. So in the love scene, it's his butt, not my butt. <laughs> but they edited it, so it kind of looks like it could be my butt, but it's his. It, we've had two people come over with Blu-rays for both of those movies, which I was surprised to see Robert Fire on Blu-ray. I was like, wow, that's so cool. The most of the time I ever see that is like a crappy DVD release. But you didn't get asked to do the commentary for that movie? I know. That's such a crock. I know. Carl I mean, Winters. Brandon's dead, so <laughs> you should be doing the commentary with the director. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if, if, they're, uh, if they're on it. If Powers and Brandon were actually... Uh, no, not Brandon. Not Brandon yeah. But Powers DVDs maybe. wasn't even a, a thing on the Zeitgeist yet when he died. That's true. That yeah. We were right. still in the VHS era. Laserdisc was still big. Yes. DVD didn't really debut until like three or four years after he died. Right. That was like... The X Files season one was the first thing, uh, first t- television series on DVD. Oh wow! Cost okay. like one hundred and fifteen dollars for the season. Oh Nowadays God. you can get it for like twenty dollars, thirty dollars <laughs> on Blu-ray, digitals. You know, about yeah, yeah. the same. So times have changed. What are you currently working on? Currently, I am not working on. Oh, I think I'm. I think the love of my daughter. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I've got a. I can look it up. Yeah, so Brian Ingram. Oh, he's listening. Sorry, Brian. I don't know your last name. I'll it off the top. Of my that's head. okay. We can edit this. Okay. We're not airing this like We're right away. Live. We might air it tomorrow, but I'm not gonna. I will edit it before we air it. Okay. Um. Did you ever keep anything from a set that you're on? Uh, no, a couple of coats. A couple coats? Of, of, of really nice of, coats, yeah. Yes. Wardrobe nice pair coats. of shoes or something? Yes. No, not never shoes, but like leather jackets, stuff like that. There it is. Did you ever notice in uh, She-Wolf of London that your hair was its own character? Yes. It was as versus. 90s and as 80s as you could possibly get. I think you and Louise Roby had like... 
Louise Roby was in uh, Friday the 13th, the series. Yes. And she had extravagantly, like, curly, long hair. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Brian Ingerman, For the Love of His Daughter. It's a feature film that I will be shooting in uh, Kentucky this fall. It's a very good movie. True story about a man who avenges his daughter's abuse. In 2012, you said that was the first uh, horror convention you went to. It was Horror Hound. You didn't know that this whole kind of like culture existed, right? Yes, exactly. But you, so, were you, was it overwhelming? It was sort of overwhelming and sort of like um, amazing. Like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that there was one young girl that came up and she was like, I can't believe I'm meeting the She Wolf of London. She's like, you know, I, I was a little girl and I watched it every week. Yeah, and she, I, she's like, you inspired me to be strong. And I was like, that is so cool. Because I really love doing this. I was 10 years old when I saw it. I was, I was like hooked into it. I didn't know what the hell I was watching. I was just like, this is a werewolf show. Yeah. I'm 10. I don't know what this is. But I can't watch other werewolf shows. So I can watch this. <laughs> yeah, so it's child friendly. Yeah, in, in, in a way. It predates like Buffy and a lot of other supernatural shows. Yeah. And again, the only thing out at the time was like Friday the 13th. The series, which yeah. had nothing to do with Jason, it was about two cousins hunting down cursed antique objects by the devil. <laughs> but so, like the '80s and early '90s, you started getting this wave of television of like sci-fi, fantasy, horror shows. You know, even the horror genre was kind of drying up in the early '90s. You know, it wasn't yeah. until Scream where everything kind of started getting popular again. Yeah, and there was that big uh, when Texas Chainsaw Leatherface came out and got an X rating. That was in the '80s, right? That was no, that was ninety. Was Leatherface was before she won though. It was before she won. Yeah. Eighty nine, eighty nine. Yeah, okay. So it's still the eighties. Yeah. Triple X for violence. <laughs> but you watch it today, you're like, And you get to work nothing. with Beagle Mortensen in that. Yes, I got Long Beagle, before Lord of the Rings. Way before Lord of the Rings. Yes. How was Beagle Mortensen? Awesome. It's very, very um, very sweet, very generous actor. In your in, in Leatherface, you're you know, you're kinda of put through the ringer. What do you have to go someplace in your head to be like, you know, it's all pretend and you know I'm safe and everything's fine but in the movie you look like you're effed yes I know it was um, it was great because we were filming at night so it really was night it really was in the middle of you know the woods so it was really easy to get you know imagine that I was really that effed as you say <laughs> And you like, became like, like when I escaped from the chair and I run out of the um, you know, farmhouse, it was like they had the chainsaw going and they had the um, truck blaring and it was it was all quite realistic. Did uh, would you say like uh, in Leatherface you probably got the most exercise you ever got in your life? <laughs> that was a lot of running around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were in the car for a long time though too. That was a funny story. The, is my first thing I ever did on film. So when we were in the car and they're like with the the clapper board, they're like episode one, scene one, take one, um, act two, whatever. And they did the clap. Yeah. I literally said, "Oh my gosh, you really do that?" And I could see the producer in front like of the car. That was the first car. thing you did. First thing the, I've ever done on film. Thing, yeah. yeah. And the producer was just like, oh my god, she doesn't know what she... She's never been in a film before. And I really hadn't. I'd only done a commercial. Have you ever thought about going in front of the... Behind the camera? Like, trying to do something yourself? Or do you just want to be an actress? Um... Do you have an idea for something you want to write down and then you want to produce or direct? I have some ideas. Yeah? Like, uh... Is there some people you've talked to to try and... No. No? It's in the very early stages, like, just in my mind. You can... Probably need somebody at like a con like this to be able yes. to get that issue. Yeah, no, that's fine. Right. But thank you, Kate, for coming on the show. Thank Appreciate you. It. Great right. to be here. Hello. Oh my God, it's so cool to meet you. I'm a huge fan of Leatherface. So. Are you? Oh, it's, it's one of my favorite. Movies.